something was going to happen. Something wonderful. Jeepers, creepers. G'day, everybody, and welcome to the show on this Freedom Night. Ange has already joined us. Ange, get out of the house. Five people are with us already. What is wrong with you people? Where the restrictions have been lifted, you can get out on the town and see puppies, see dudes. And uh, well, I tell you what, there's something wrong with us. Nerds wanting to stay inside and just watch the three of us wrap it on. Unbelievable. Anyway, how are we all tonight? I hope we're having a really, really good time. We have no any, ha, no idea how many people are going to be joining in to watch us, but we've got seven already, and that is absolutely fantastic. Before I go any further, I've got to say hello to my lads. Uh, Jeff on MPS, how are we going tonight? Going very well. Uh, good to hear you guys have got a little bit of taste of freedom, so that's uh, been really nice to uh, to see. MPS? Yeah, well, I, I tasted some of that freedom, and I want to go back in my house because nerds and sunshine don't mix. And there's too many people out and about. I like I like going around the shopping centres when there's no one there. I love that. You know, the shops can be open, that's fine, but or shut, I don't care. Um, but, yeah, it's just too many people. All right, so we've got our first presentation, and I think this is one a lot of people are sort of hanging out for. This is uh, – Jeffro's going to be talking about pop culture clothing. So uh, what do you reckon, Jeffro? Are you good to go? I am uh, very good to go, uh, Mr. Uh, Slide Man. So, Here we go. Uh, You're off and running. Here we go. So uh, to get into the uh, the Halloween spirit, we actually have a Halloween costume from the 1970s. So those Smurfs can be pretty scary. It's almost <laughs> like it's bad as the uh, the Michael Myers mask from Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, on the uh, the right hand side, we have a classic uh, 70s Star Wars T-shirt, which sort of almost reminds me like of the tie dye effect. So if you ever Live through the 70s, you'll know that uh, there was a bit of a tie-dye phase, so we loved all those beautiful colours. So uh, I thought this will launch us off with our uh, sci-fi zone look at fashion. So let's start with what the cool kids used to wear in the 70s and 80s. So <laughs> believe, it, believe it or not, um, if, you, if you wore that in the 70s, you were going to get belted up. I don't care where you came from. That... <laughs> that was really something that um, maybe might have been a little bit tragic for some kids, but um, certainly the, the colours and the tops and, and, and all that sort of on the left-hand side, very much uh, a thing I do remember. And, of course, flares on the women and, and guys too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's it had its moment, and I think we should look at uh, what we progressed to in the 80s. Well, before we do that, now you notice this dude here is wearing white pants, right? And because yeah. back then a lot of guys wore tight white pants, and it is no word of exaggeration, I once saw a commercial for dudes who were wearing tight white pants to wear something in their underwear in case they had a bit of a, bit of a dribble after they'd left the bathroom. And they will call, I can't remember, I can't believe I remember this, peenie pads. And because the guy stands out there <laughs> with a girl with his arms on his thinking, hey, girls, check me out. I'm a really good, cool-looking bloke, and he's got a little bit of like a, a stain, as it were, in the most inappropriate place. And I thought, yeah, that's a good marketing sort of example. Eh? So I don't know who that actor was who got to play that part, but uh, I reckon he didn't get paid enough. So uh, there we go. <laughs> Jeff, how are yeah, you, mate? Go back one sec. Go back one sec, please. Sorry. They look like Barbie dolls and Ken dolls. They don't look like actual humans. Look at the guy with the blue <laughs> shirt and the blonde hair. He just looks like a Barbie doll. It, it yeah. actually reminds me of uh, the Scooby-Doo movie, with Fred. <laughs> um, I like this one from uh, – where are you? I've lost who it was. Uh, that, that's okay. Uh, oh, here we go. Michelle said it looks like Charlie's Angels. Yeah, absolutely. They're a bit like that, eh? So I must admit I was a fan of the Fleas. So uh, <laughs> oh, here we go. That's the, Here we go. That's the kids' collection that says stay home and from school and be proud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Very good. Like, All right. We, like human Christmas presents. Yeah, exactly right. So, uh, but they always there's always room for these sort of clothing at a party. Someone will always have a '70s party, and it's just amazing how this stuff just reappears. And people say, "Yeah, well, it still fits from 40 years ago. How good is that?" <laughs> so uh, there you go. All right, Jeff. Right. So uh, drastic change to the the '80s, and I think a lot of us are going to recognise the uh, the pastel colours that were big, 
and then there was of course the the iconic things like the uh the bomber jacket and the uh the slightly sort of looking goth look and uh all the uh the paisley that uh that came out so we had a huge jump so this is what the kids in the uh the 80s were wearing and i mean i guess some of you guys might remember uh, uh trying to imitate those looks no yeah i didn't get Sorry, yeah. uh, I didn't get into the cool clothing side until um, like the late 80s. And I remember owning stonewashed jeans and I loved my stonewashed jeans. And one of the things that I actually bought for Myers, I remember it really well, was a pair of bright white uh, runners, right? And they had the big high uh, back that went up the like the ankle. Oh, yeah. And they actually had a zipper with a little flap next to it, right? They're called Kangaroo Brand, can you believe it? And in the commercial that I saw when I was at the store, there's a sequence where all these high, these like wild dogs are chasing this dude. So this dude just walking across the desert, right? And all these dogs are, rawr, 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 and he's walking and he goes, rawr, rawr, and he gets closer and closer and closer. It's like the dogs are going to eat this dude. And just as they're about to get to him, he unzips this tiny little pocket of his shoes and pulls out all these sausages. Because <laughs> <laughs> and as I hate him, he walks away. <laughs> Jeez. Oh, I love it. So this is what the, uh, the, the, the cool gigs were wearing in the, uh, the 70s. So on the left-hand side, you, of course, you've got to have your Star Wars T-shirts. And there were a huge range of different uh, Star Wars mm -hmm. T-shirts. And if your mum couldn't afford a Star Wars T-shirt, you go out and buy the uh, iron-on transfer. So you could actually put it on your own T-shirt. But what I found interesting was that the, uh, the kid down the bottom is wearing an Admiral Akbar T-shirt. Mm -hmm. So we always thought that maybe Admiral Akbar wasn't cool until sort of it's a trap sort of uh, made him a very popular character. But no, there is there it is. It's uh, squint if you uh, look hard enough. It's uh, it's uh, Admiral Snack Bar getting his own uh, design. Of course, the um, the cool Doctor Who geeks. Where would you be without your um, your Tom Baker scarf? So uh, we saw a lot of these, and that's actually the um, the pattern. So if you uh, couldn't afford to uh, buy one, then you would obviously go out and knit yourself one. And of course, on the right hand side, um, like any TV show, there was always like the uh, the heroes and such. So we had, uh, in this case, uh, the Fonz. So everyone loved Happy Days. Everyone wanted, everyone wanted to be the Fonz. And if you weren't a music nerd and you're wearing your Led Zeppelin t-shirts or your um, your Skyhooks t-shirts. Well, you would go something television related, and uh, there's an example. But get it um, on with the fonts. Uh, so Michelle said she's still wearing half of her stuff from that era. So I reckon that's actually kind of groovy. So that's very, very, very cool. Um, uh, now this one, Jeffro, what's the deal with this? Are you going to model your own Tom Baker underwear? Oh, dude, what's the deal with that? <laughs> now that you mention it, just um, excuse me. Why no? <laughs> Uh, Claire reckons the Fonz isn't exactly geeky. The only response to that, Claire, is hey. So uh, hey. there you go. Very cool. And you're talking about the Star Wars um, iron-on transfers. When they came out, they were actually like a rubbery sort of thing with glitter on them. And I remember I got the Darth Vader one put onto a shirt, and I thought I was the coolest kid in the universe because it looked so – I'm walking around here like – at this point, I was like 11 years old, you know, 11, 12 years old, walking around thinking, check me out of my Darth Vader T-shirt. And they were fantastic. And they was like as rare as hen's teeth to find now, those ones with all the glitter uh, embedded within them. And you had to go to a T-shirt shop to get them ironed on. You couldn't use a normal iron because really? they had to be all pressed on in one go. But they absolutely were fantastic. And they were very, very popular at the time. But, yeah, they're actually rubber. You could actually feel it. And it's like, it's like a rubbery thing. So very good. I had, a, go. I had a Jedi T-shirt, uh, which had a, a biker scout, which was used in the Con 80 uh, book that was my profile picture very good so uh i, <laughs> I like this one did the force protect you and other kids were punching <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> now that's when like you're walking down the street and the other kids are coming the other way and you go oh i'm just going to cover up a little bit uh <laughs> <gonna be> <laughs> oh, dear. anyway so there you go very so good. now we're going to have a look at uh geek wear from the uh the bottom to the top so at the bottom, we'll start off with shoes and we'll end up sort of uh, up the top wearing um, uh, examples of uh, various different uh, fandom stuff. So uh, uh, these particular shoes here, um, not exactly cheap. They came out uh, this year. And if you've got a $150 American, you can um, lash out and buy these Adidas or Adidas, depending on where you come from, uh, Star Wars uh, shoes. And of course, the one on the uh, uh, 
the other side is uh, Marge Simpson uh, costume. So I thought, well, I'll just throw that in for good measure. So if you want a matching pair, though, what you can do is you get two copies of the silver shoe, the chrome one, right? Uh, so you got a, lot, a left and a right-hand one. Take the R2 off, right, and just put in another C-3PO droid. And if anybody says, but C-3PO isn't silver, you go, but TC-14 is. So back at you, nerds. There we go. I've got two chrome shoes and they both match. How good's that? And you know what Adidas stands for? All day I dream about sex. Yeah, no, baby. all day I dream about Star Wars. That's no. Oh, There's an extra dude. W, dickhead. You've got to have the yeah, S. All day matter. I dream about it sex. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Where can you put the extra W? That's Adidas. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. The shoes aren't. <laughs> hey, here's a vote. I'm putting a vote out there for everybody who's watching this right now. Which one of the two versions do you prefer? All day I dream about sex or all day I dream about Star Wars? <laughs> what school did you go to, dude? Jeepers Creepers. Sad Catholic school. Yeah, very good. <laughs> very good. Okay, now leading on with the um, the examples from the uh, the footwear range, we have original seventies C three PO slippers. Now these are the ugliest looking things that uh, you'd ever want to see, and um, apparently someone found them in a, an estate sale uh, and put them up for uh, auction. And I thought. I wonder how much these rare C3PO slippers went for. And then I had a look at the price. They went for 30 bucks. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop you, Jeffro. We're going to we're gonna real mixed bag of answers here. So <laughs> Kelvin said sex. Susie said Star Wars. Claire said sec. I think she meant sex. So the vial has always said it's always been about sex, which is kind of groovy. Stacy's gone for Star Wars, which is kind of tragic. Susie, I've got no idea what Susie just said. Claire's back to have sex again. She's got a ton. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it! Absolutely fantastic! Oh, alien sex! Oh, there you go. Now we're getting, now we're getting a bit weird. So there you go. So hang on, Adidas D A S. All day dream about. No, it doesn't work. Dream alien sex. Yeah, okay. Let's move on from there. Okay, uh, go for it, Jeffro. Sorry for cutting you off, but that was important. In, to get the, one out uh, in the middle there, we've got the uh, the Darth Vader corduroy slippers. So uh, back in the day. <laughs> Corduroy used to be on everything. It's like trousers, jumpers, uh, you name it. So uh, uh, it, these came out in 1982, and I thought, well, they look pretty good. You can tell it's the uh, the 70s going on 80s because it's in the tan brown color. But uh, I, I had a look to see how much these ones sold for, and guess how much these rare 1982 slippers sold for? Uh, it's either a lot or very cheap. $30, $30 is just like the other ones. <laughs> and, and then on the, uh, the high-end scale, you can now, like the um, uh, Adidas uh, runners, get these really sort of custom-looking uh, high-end sort of um, uh, shoes. And and these ones on the right, uh, I can't remember what they were, but they were north of $200, I think. But uh, limited numbers and, and they're sort of... Uh, the sort of things you wouldn't really want to wear. I mean, seriously, you know, if they got damaged, uh, you'd n kick yourself. Literally. Yeah. Those you kick your own shoes. Um, so Susie, she spends all her time just thinking about herself, which is kind of groovy. I like this one from our, uh, our 80 Dags. <laughs> I think it'll be, I'll be, I'd be the only one wearing those, and most people would say, no, thanks. And, of course, get all, um, Daniel's been out buying his own Adidas shoes uh, for Han Solo, which is kind of groovy. But I agree with you, Jeffro. You've got to wonder, if you're wearing shoes that are absolutely become irreplaceable, do you then take the risk? Because you might look cool, but if you scuff them or damage them, you're juicy-fruited. So we'll move on to uh, the next part, which is socks. So um, socks have been around for a while, and the ones on the, uh, the left-hand side are from my original collection. So uh, mint, haven't been uh, used, so still brand new with tags from the uh, Ninja Turtle days from 1980s. The ones in the middle, I thought were really grouse, and if I ever find them, I would own them in a heartbeat. Mash socks, so that's really good. So. Uh, uh, and on the uh, the right hand side, we see what uh, technology can now do with socks. So you can actually do a wrap around entire print of um, of images. So that one's actually got movie posters. So you could probably recognise if you look really hard enough some of the uh, uh, the movie posters with the Goonies there on the uh, foot. Yeah, it's probably a similar 
technology they're using for T-shirts now because T-shirts, you can get the T-shirts where they print over the whole thing, both the front, the back, the sides, the whole lot. I've got a, a thing T-shirt that's just like that. So maybe they're using the same technology. I've, they've got a name for it, but I can't think what it is. So, uh, yeah, very cool. Now, we're moving on to uh, sleepwear. So this is the, uh, the sleepwear of the period. And, uh, of course, uh, Snoopy and Charlie Brown and all that was quite big. Uh, this, if you mm. ever notice, like sleepwear is always about sort of from – neck down to the uh the feet so you know uh they weren't really into short shorts or anything like that mm. and of course the uh, one on the right the jedi sleepwear uh when i looked at it i thought that guy looks like he's in a uh, a rocky jacket you know sort of da -da -da, <laughs> da -da -da. Yeah, he's got the the yellow with the black belt and it looks looks almost like a, a sort of something you put a rocky logo on it but um yeah that uh that's what uh the cool kids were uh, sleeping in uh, now, along the uh, double bunk. Now, Colin's clearly got Aaron figured out. Buy the slippers at 30 bucks and resell them again for 300 Yeah, here you go. That's probably not far from the truth, Colin. I'll tell you what, Aaron was telling me today about something he did. He pulled, pulled a shifty when buying something and reselling it again at a profit in the same place, just a few tables down. It's like, oh, he's a cheeky little lad. But, uh, yeah, you notice that a lot of sleeping stuff is mainly all for children. So if you're an adult dude, who wanted to get like sleeping like clothing that if you for Star Wars, Star Trek, and whatever else? But as an adult, you really couldn't do it unless you uh, uh, decided to sleep in your um, your normal clothes. So uh, yes, it was a bit <laughs> very good, Aaron. I <laughs> 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 uh, love it. So there you go. Very very cool stuff. So I like how the dude on this side he's got the Star Wars stuff holding the action figure, and the girls like doing the Snoopy thingy there. So. Uh, you could probably put together your own thought bubbles as to what these two are talking about. But, uh, yeah, anyway, we move on, shall we? Go for it. And, of course, now we get to uh, good old underwear. So uh, uh, they did a lot of Star Wars underwear back in the, uh, the 70s, and they used to call them underoos. And uh, I love the fact that, you know, here's this kid wearing his, uh, his jocks and, like, a T-shirt, but he dreams that he's a Star Wars pilot, you know? Like, that's... That's real cosplay dreaming there, you know, sort of. <laughs> I look just like a Star Wars pilot. <laughs> Except me tongues hanging out. <laughs> so um, the, um, the middle one is actually from uh, my collection, as you could probably would have guessed. Uh, and this is actually Jerry Anderson um, underwear uh, from Fireball XL5. So the interesting thing is that Fireball XL5 was actually in black and white. But, you know, you could wear your uh, your sleepwear and uh, it was in colour and uh, you could feel, feel pretty proud about it, you know. So um, I've worn that a few times and it, it really snug. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, Jeff. <laughs> There's a lot of inappropriate stuff going on here at the moment. And I know people are re-watching the show on replay, so I'm, I'm gonna have to put these up. So Colin has said, I like this one. I'll show you my baby view, show me your <laughs> That's not right. Then Daniel popped up, let me show you my lightsaber, and Spanking had said it's a yellow -yo lightsaber. <laughs> So, yeah, if you're wondering why we put these messages up, because people do watch the show and replay. So, uh, oh, that's just... <laughs> anyway, sorry, Jeffrey, we keep cutting you off, mate. That, um, that's cool. Oh, yeah. And uh, just the uh, pr proud piece of my uh, collection, it's actually a uh, cod piece from uh, Salute of the Jugger. Now, uh, not actually uh, an original prop, but it's actually a fake prop that uh, Steve Scholes made up many, many years ago. But I thought I run out of uh, underwear examples, so I'll uh, stick in a big freaking black cod piece just to uh, round it off. Um, yeah, the kid here with the the thing, I think they're called underoos, and they kept yeah. she produced those for a few movies back then. And you could look at it and say, yeah, maybe it's a little bit appropriate, but inappropriate at the same time, depending on your perspective. But uh, uh, yeah, um, sci-fi underwear has been around for a very long time. As once again, it's mainly been for um, for children uh but uh, there were some some dudes who tried to squeeze into various like superhero underwear and all sort of stuff and boxer shorts of course got around that problem very very quickly so um if you actually have uh, and in fact i think i've tried to share this story once before no i don't i actually have a pair of star wars i had a pair of star wars boxer shorts that ended up on mcleod's daughters can you believe it the tv series series so there you go my actually my underwear which i never actually wore as underwear it's actually more famous than i am because my aunt yeah the star wars boxer shorts on mcleod's daughter so 
there you go. Go figure that. I so actually, I actually realised as I'm reading the, uh, the the one on the left, uh, juvenile slumber something. It just says um, uh, unzip two, and you don't see the rest. I'm thinking, yeah. what do you unzip it to do what? Yeah. What are they advertising? You sort of zip out and sort of do what? You know, I'm well, just wondering. Been- it says juvenile slum. Maybe you should yeah. have been juvenile slum. Who knows? Um, the underoos were pretty popular. I had a pair of, I think it was Superman ones when I was a kid, and they're re-releasing underoos uh, currently. There's, you can get them, uh, I think they're, it's online for now, but, yeah, I think they're small size. They may also be bringing out adult versions, but there you go. Um, Kelvin, uh, to answer your question, yes, they did. They actually used them on the show, and I did actually see the episode, and they did return them to me. But what had happened is they wanted, for whatever reason, a pair of Star Wars boxer shorts for an episode. They contacted the Star Walking Club. They then put the word out and said, who's got a pair of boxer shorts they can loan? I said, I've got a pair I don't even use, right? They're from Davenport. Davenport did some fantastic, um, like, silk uh, boxer shorts for many years, from fantastic designs, and I was able to loan them to uh, McLeod's daughters, and they ended up using those. But I always thought it was just ironic that, uh, my underwear ends up being on TV, but I don't. So uh, there you go. But, uh, yes, there's a lot of – Davenport did do a lot, a lot of really good stuff. <clears throat> okay. Now we move on to uh, retail T-shirts. And, I mean, there were a huge amount of uh, uh, T-shirts that uh, came out. So I just thought I'd pick a few examples. So uh, this one here is um, Ghostbusters. And, I mean, there was a lot of Ghostbusters T-shirts that were primarily the ghost with the uh, the logo. But um, they didn't always uh, uh, do that, so I just thought that's a slimer. The uh, the one in the middle is what I call a, a 3D T-shirt. So they actually make these T-shirts where the um, chest burster is actually bursting out of the chest. I, I remember when these came out and thought that was really super cool, but uh, I was never actually able to see where I could buy one. And um, the one on the... Uh, the right-hand side, uh, if you're a real nerd like Dags, I know he is, uh, he'll actually know what that means. So uh, this is um, uh, from, from a website called, uh, if I get it right, um, lastexittonowhere.com. And yep. this is something that Dags pointed out years ago to me and said, look at all these great T-shirts. They'll actually do these really obscure references to movies that um, only the diehard fans would know. So uh, in this case, Dags, what's that T-shirt uh, referencing? Yeah, so uh, it's actually the uh, the station from uh, The Thing, which I think uh, Michelle was the first one with the answer to that one. So, oh, well done. Um, yes, exactly right. Um, so I'm just going to go back a bit before I finish off what you want to say. Uh, I like what the vial said here about the underwear. Uh, Superman underwear would be called overoos because they're worn on the outside. I do actually like that. Um and I remember that alien t-shirt a few years. Okay, Michelle had seen a few back in her day of those alien shirts, which was kind of groovy. Um, so yes, so the 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 website's called the Last Exit to Nowhere, lastexittonowhere.com, and they actually produce so what they do is they get a movie or a TV show which has a a company or a logo or something within it, and they'll actually produce it as a t-shirt. And the quality is really, really, really good. And they do sort of like it's not just um sci-fi and, and fantasy, but they do other pop culture things as well. Some really left field things, and you go, you have to actually look it up sometimes. You go, what the hell is this from? Oh, it's the hotel from The Shining. Uh, or it's like the uh, the the boxing gym from Rocky and all this sort of stuff. But they actually look 100% completely on the ball, uh, and it's well worth uh, checking out. So it's an unusual name for a company, lastexittonowhere.com. But, uh, yeah, by all means, check them out and uh, have a look at their range. And they've been doing it for years and years and years. So if you see really, really good T-shirts that are printed, that have um, they're referencing uh, pop culture things, chances are it actually came from them. But, uh, yeah, the full station is actually from um, the thing. So uh, there you go, the 82 version. Very good. <clears throat> And now the uh, the next one we have is on the opposite scale, and these are fan produced t shirts. So all these examples are from uh, New South Wales artist Mike McGann. Now he was very prolific in the uh, the late seventies, early eighties, and even into the nineties. And and as my understanding is, he still produces um, t shirts uh, even today. So the good thing about it was that. If there was a a particular television show or movie that you would not expect to see on a T-shirt, you really wanted it, then um, he could have produced it. So uh, Prince Planet, a primary example of a a, a late 50s Japanese uh, show that was big, had a cult following, but you'd never get a T-shirt. Well, he produced it. This Island Earth, the same classic movie, 
And uh, on the right from um, Kenny Everett, uh, Captain Kremen. So the key thing I think it's worth pointing out about this is that the guy, so he lived in Sydney, he was a local, and he produced his own shirts, as Jeffro said, but he was producing shirts at a time when it was very, very difficult to get proper T-shirts for things that you really liked, right? You know, you say, I'm a huge fan of, say, in this case, this island earth. There's just no merchandise for it whatsoever. And Mike was able to produce all these unusual shirts, and some of them were really, really clever and really, really, um, um, like, innovative. And it was actually mentioned that if you were in the fan scene uh, in the 80s uh, and the 90s, everyone owned at least one of these shirts because regardless of like, oh, I don't like that, I don't like that, but that one, I was like, I've never seen anything like that before. I've got to have it. And I've got a few of them myself, and I know Jeffro has because these are probably his. And um, it was actually a great way of supporting a franchise that you really enjoyed. That was a little bit left of centre, so it wasn't just your Star Wars and Star Treks. It was something a bit unusual. Like in this case, Criminal of the Star Corps, there'd be nothing relating to Criminal of the Star Corps in terms of, like, merchandise. And uh, and it was great. It was absolutely fantastic. And they were produced locally in Australia. So uh, it was actually really, really cool. And, um, yeah, he was a, a guy who did some really, really good things and really supported the community. So it was fantastic. <clears throat> and moving on to uh, the next T-shirts we have, we have uh, what are called production T-shirts. So uh, these are obviously a lot uh, harder to come <clears throat> by because they were uh, issued to... Uh, uh, cast and crew. So we have some great examples here of uh, Industrial Light and Magic up the top. Uh, down below the um, the Star Wars effects unit from um, uh, the original production of Star Wars. Uh, and and they're quite funny in, in many ways too. So you can see the uh, Ewoks one again. Uh, sort of they like to have a bit of fun with their uh, t-shirts. The ILM one, of course, uh, uh, a bastardization of the original IM. ILM logo and on the right is um, just a couple of examples of um, promotional t-shirts so the uh, the one there is for Elvira Mr. the Dark that uh, came out in the 80s uh, that one's from my collection so uh, uh, never worn it uh, but uh, yeah it uh, it's one of many types of uh, t-shirts that they'll do to promote uh, movies and give them out to uh, press people and on the uh, the bottom right hand side, that's actually from the uh, the tour of War of the World. So, as you can see, it says 30th anniversary tour, local crew. So they were given out to all the people that were working on the the tour production, and I was lucky enough to score that on uh, eBay. Thank you very much. So don't you feel like the coolest kid in town when you end up getting a crew related shirt because they are like oh, so hard much. to come by? Yeah, yeah. Do you guys? I mean, uh, so Jeff, I know you've got any MPS. Have you got any at all? Uh, not of those. I've got crew shirts and a, a crew shirt and a crew hoodie from things I've actually worked on. So but oh, I've got yeah. none of the, the fan to, the fan sort of. No, I don't yep. have any of the fan sort of stuff. I tried stealing uh, uh, Batman versus Superman one from the guy that played Cyborg when he was here a couple of years ago at, at AMC. Um, he just wouldn't take the damn jacket off. So. Uh, I, <laughs> I <couldn't... laughs> Yeah, you, you you boost you boost your fan credibility when you're wearing a crew shirt, even if you were never part of the crew. So uh, people go, oh, you've obviously bought that from somewhere, but uh, they are definitely uh, very very cool. And some of the um, the quality of some of them was actually really fantastic. So I mean, you look at the ILM one and you go, geez, they're hanging shit on a bit of ILM, but it's the ILM guys hanging shit on themselves. So uh, they're certainly allowed to do that. But uh, no, very very cool. <clears throat> Now, uh, it is the season, and um, we are seeing more and more of uh, these coming out, and they're the good old uh, Christmas <laughs> jumper, uh, but uh, designed in a very much a, a geek way. So uh, it uh, we, we have here on the uh, left-hand side the classic uh, uh, green alien uh, in the, uh, the middle there, the, uh, the War of the Worlds one, and uh, the one I like probably the most is the... Uh, the Gremlins one, which, uh, as we know, was actually set in Christmas. But uh, uh, if you are interested in um, the 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 Fanish uh, uh, Christmas uh, jumper and you love Thunderbirds, they're currently uh, on the Jerry Anderson store and you can actually buy your version of uh, a Thunderbirds, one of these. Um, I like this question from Aaron. The actually is, do you even wash them? Uh, if you're talking about rare crew shirts you probably do it very very carefully because they are there's nothing worse than having something that is completely irreplaceable like you know it's worth a lot of, a lot of money to yourself or it's worth a lot of interest to yourself and you cannot replace it if it's destroyed that's it there's no getting another one 
And uh, what do you reckon of that, uh, fellas? Do you reckon that's something you've always I, I, I absolutely agree because there's nothing worse than sweat stains ruining the value of your collectible t shirts. <laughs> there's no, any I joke in that. Yeah. yeah. It depends on the shirt. If the shirt's a new sort of shirt and it looks fairly good, as long as it's not, you know, reeking of something, um, yeah, I probably wouldn't wash it either. Yeah, that's cool. I like this from Aaron. Uh, his t shirts have a smell of 90s convention 24 hour video rooms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. And that was always a downside. You're wearing this shirt that you're thinking, oh, look, I am eating a bit wearing this. But yeah, at some point, it's like you really got to look after it. I mean, I've actually got a couple of things that I've had for a couple of decades and they're still like in pristine condition. Whereas I know other people have got the same stuff and they've actually worn them out because they've just washed them too many times. So uh, yeah, sometimes it's a, there is a, a line between when do you wear it and display it, as in like show it off, and when do you just say, look, I can't wear it because I can't afford it to get to be damaged so uh yes it's uh, always a fine line so there you go i've got a couple of t-shirts that i wore back in the late 80s early 90s one was a batman t-shirt and all the um the logo is being is falling apart because i wore it so often and i had a couple of white and i don't wear white anymore a couple of white batman t-shirts and yeah they're they're turning a little bit yellow and there's not much i can do about it but the pictures on them are just i love them I love them so much that i was wearing them all the time <clears throat> I like this one from William. Hard boiled t shirt, never been washed or worn. Yeah, if you don't wear them, then that's okay. You can get away with it. Nah. Uh, it's the question is when you do wear them and there's like where's the there's a fine line. My my jacket that I have with all the patches all over it, right, has never been washed. And I they, I assembled that back in the early nineteen nineties because I can't wash it. Right. I've got metal bits sewn into it and all this sort of stuff and you can't like send it to a dry cleaners and all the patches are sewn in so it has never been washed since day one so uh that's probably why no one ever comes near me when i'm wearing it so there you go i've got a good i've got a good story about that uh the doug anthony all stars the comedy trio had the jackets that were very similar they never washed theirs and apparently they stunk into high heaven so uh <laughs> yeah they wore theirs every night um so uh do you want to take off uh so D oh, it's Dags, I think you say took off last week's to wash your blue Hawaiian shirt. Uh, yes, well, ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies. But uh, when I do wash uh, shirts, my other half does the washing here, and I say you've got to look after it. It's like it's completely irreplaceable. And yes, spanking that is completely true. You, but there you go. But I don't care. So uh, there you go. All right, we move on. <clears throat> okay, so moving up the uh, the body, we have ties. Now, ties were absolutely a huge, big thing, sort of, uh, and um, as as Dags mentioned, sort of with his uh, silk boxer shorts, that particular uh, company was uh, famous for not only making the boxes, but also uh, a great variety of different ties. And I've got a, a bunch of them. And the thing is, it's like I've got no reason to wear them anymore. The days where uh, you had to wear a tie to work is long gone. So they said, oh, you can have open neck shirts and people yeah. jumped at it. And then they said, Oh, well, you don't have to wear uh, work clothes. Uh, you can just go casual dress. And, of course, uh, uh, we've never looked back since. But there's some really nice designs out there. So uh, there's some uh, good examples there. But I thought the best one I I loved is the fact that uh, you can actually geek out in a, uh, a bow tie. Now, if you watch Doctor Who and, and Matt Smith, you know, bow ties are cool. But uh, doubly so when it's actually got a... Um, a, a uh, science fiction or Star Wars uh, reference to it. So I thought that would be really cool. The problem is the quote's wrong. It should be do or do not. There is no tie. Ah, oh, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> that would have been clever. Um, the Vile, who I don't think is, I don't know if he's still watching or not, uh, for the Return of the Jedi, because he's an artist and does some fantastic stuff for the no, uh, the Jedi Return of the Jedi 30th anniversary banquet, he actually got a, a necktie and painted the poster uh, from Return of the Jedi of the lightsaber going up, you know, the one that's been swung around. I actually painted on a tie, so it was a one-of-one, one, right? And it looked absolutely fantastic. And when you looked at it, you thought it had been printed that way, but he, no, he did it himself. And I've got to say, that was absolutely magnificent. So uh, hopefully the vial still got that. And I really did think about trying to buy it off because I thought, mate, that is awesome, even though no need to wear it. Um, sometimes ties work and sometimes they don't. And, uh, yes, very good, Mr. Vile. You still have it? Absolutely. I loved it. I loved it. It, just, it was magnificent. It was like photo quality. Um, one of the funny stories, and I was actually talking about this to Aaron uh, Challenger not that long ago, actually, was when The Phantom Menace first came out in 1999, I think it might have been Davenport, produced all these neckties for the movie, right? Your Jar Jar Binks and Anakin Skywalkers and whatever else. No one bought them. I mean, they were complete rubbish, right? But I remember, like, in 2012 or something like that, a supernova, there was a big collector store, and they actually had 
a whole rack of all these neckties from the Phantom Menace, and they're like $10 each. And I thought, you know what? You'd be better off just throwing them out and cutting your, and cutting your losses. No one in the universe is going to buy one of these ever. And uh, and I thought, can't they get it in their minds that that, that time has passed? No one's interested, and uh, the, the marketing for the film just it didn't work in terms of neckties for – uh, for what they were showing so yeah there's an example of neckties that i don't think anybody would have collected so uh you guys remember those ones at all i i do yeah i mean it's just one of those things where anything from uh the prequel series did not hold its value so uh even you know 15 20 years down the track you know you can't even get 10 bucks for it and that's probably how much you probably paid 20 back in the day well, I the vial has the more one, so that's probably about the only one that's still actually owned by anybody in the world. So uh, there you go. So oh, actually, Daniel does too. So uh, very, very good. But yeah, I, there was. I, have, a, funny. I have a, I have a fat one sitting there in my cupboard somewhere. So I, same I must, era, but not from the film. Yeah, I must say, I do have a, a fat one. Very good. Yeah. So there you go. But yeah, you are right though. It's great to have ties, but there's no need to wear them anymore. <clears throat> so we're moving right up to headwear. So. Uh, just a uh, good selection of different types of hats. Now, the Nostromo one, I remember uh, uh, that coming out in um, Space Age books. So there's a bit of a reference for those people that remember 70s science fiction bookshops in, um, in Victoria. And uh, I bought mine from there. So that was the must-have hat because I was a big Alien fan. I don't remember the Star Wars ones. Maybe uh, you mm. might, Dags, but um, yeah. I don't remember Star Wars hats. Um, not that one, no. Not, not that, that one. Oh no, but I, I've I got one the other couple of years ago when we were in uh, LA. So yep. yeah, I've seen Star Wars hats around, but not that style exactly. And moving away, they've done uh, many different character hats. So of course, I threw in the the Pikachu just to give you an idea of uh, character hats. And there's also specialist. <laughs> so uh, here we have uh, a hat for uh, the Soil Corporation, which really amused me. So uh, uh, people those who just... can't read the fine print, it says great food starts with great people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, in the, uh, uh, the bottom middle there, we have the, uh, the cat in the hat hat. So uh, <laughs> that um, shows you sort of what sort of novelty hats people can get up to. And just on the bottom right uh, is a, uh, a kid's hat. So for an infant. So get them young and sort of get them onto uh, Star Wars by sticking on a uh, uh, a little uh, infant uh, skull cap with uh, Star Wars on it. Um, I like this one from Aaron. It said uh, people making um, skirts and clothing out of the neckties, putting them together. That would actually probably be uh, kind of groovy because they'd have a lot of colour. It'd be hard, though, because of the shape of them, but I guess if you can do it, then why not? So very cool. I think hey, Dags so and I both have a hat from... Uh, Warner Brothers up in Queensland that has bat ears on it. Yeah. It says Warner oh, Brothers and Batman. From the yeah, they probably they sort of go a bit skew if, you know, they're not exactly. <laughs> but, but uh, yes, fan hats have been around for since the dawn of time. So there's um, a whole a lot of varieties out there, depending on what it is that you like. So, yeah, exactly right. And now we move on to <clears throat> uh, uh, the miscellaneous. So we've got um, gloves. So the, uh, the chewy ones I thought were quite interesting. I don't know if they'd actually go out in public and wear them, but um, uh, it, uh, they, I thought that really looked cool. The ones on the top middle are the Freddy Krueger gloves. That's from my own collection. So they were quite the big thing back in the uh, the 80s. Uh, on the, uh, the the top right there, uh, cosplay C-3PO um, gloves. So, I mean, it's pretty cheap ass to sort of try and put them on a C-3PO costume, but that's what they're being sold as. Uh, on the bottom uh, left, uh, an example of what they call steampunk glasses. Same with the one in the uh, the middle. And mm. on the, uh, the far right, we have uh, an original Empire Strikes Back handkerchief. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. There you go. so, unless you said it was a handkerchief, you may think, you know, it's a napkin or uh, uh, something else. Yeah, there you go. Very good. <clears throat> and um, that has been uh, our presentation of um, fashion and, uh, and wear from the, uh, the bottom to the top. So uh, thanks for watching. And I thought I'd throw a few, few cute pictures in there of uh, 
uh, dogs barishly dressed up in um, Star Wars costumes. <laughs> yeah, and don't they look happy about it too? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Now, embarrassing your pets is uh, all the rage, that's for sure. So uh, very good stuff. I think the cool thing about, like, pop culture stuff is that there's just about something for everybody. Whether you want really, really obscure shirts, really, really out there shirts, hats. I always wanted, you talking about neckties earlier. I love some of the Star Trek neckties you could get because they used to be all very colourful with the space themes and all the rest of it. The only thing I didn't like is when they actually wrote the word Star Trek. I like the idea that it was so subtle that you wouldn't notice it. It just looked like, oh, it's just a very colourful tie. And then when you really looked at it, you go, oh, there's actually galaxies and shit there and there's a little Enterprise and whatever. I didn't like the idea that they put the word Star Trek in, but, you know, that was just me. But uh, there were some very, very, very groovy things uh, you can get. And, um, uh, yeah, I think everybody's got something that they would absolutely adore and love. So what do you reckon, fellas? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, uh, as long as we need to wear clothes, we will be buying um, geeky mm. stuff. And, uh, it'll always yeah. be out there. Yeah, and if you ever look on eBay for, like, pop culture shirts, Star Wars, Star Trek, whatever, there's, like, more than you could possibly imagine. Um, and, and you can actually, like, spend way, probably way more than you ever need to on, on half this stuff. And that's just the current material because everybody's just, like, producing so much now. It's a, it's become an industry out of uh, unto itself, and it's a bit out of control. But uh, there you go. Very good. <clears throat> any uh, any other final comments from you two before we move on? No, that was it. I mean, if you love T-shirts, you can actually get a Loot Crate exclusive where you pay 50, 60 bucks and they send you exclusive T-shirts. So if T-shirts, your thing, you could go nuts on them. Oh, you can do the same thing if you if you go to Kmart and Big W. They're, you know, all the new sort of um, – I got a couple of cheap Batman ones and He-Man ones lately that have never mm. been released. And, yeah, dime a dozen. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I, you know the world has changed when you can go to a Kmart and they'll have, like, Star Wars shirts there or whatever else. It never used to happen back in the day. It just, it just didn't happen, right? Now you walk in there and they've got the logo and Stormtroopers and Darth Vader and all the rest. And you go, hasn't the world changed when this is now mainstream rather than exclusive I have to really dig for it in like you know, bong shops and stuff like that. And that just goes to show how, how everything sort of uh, just changed. And you've got dudes wearing Star Wars shirts down the street and they probably wouldn't even give, know what Star Wars even is, right? They're just going, well, I bought this at Kmart because it was cheap. And I was like, oh, that's just how it is now. So, yeah, it's a completely different world to what it used to be. But uh, very good. All right, we're going to buzz off. Everybody's posting all this stuff now. We're all in the zone, but we do actually have to finish up because it's the end of the night. So, uh be sure to stay safe, get out, enjoy yourselves, enjoy the weather, and we will see you on Saturday, 8 o'clock, Halloween show. You know you want to uh, party hard or rock on. And in the interim, make sure you ah, stay nerdy. Okay, bye. See ya. <laughs>